Welcome, welcome, welcome to another exciting episode of the Trap Nerds Podcast. This is not an episode. I'm pretty sure this is a promo. You know what it is. We in this piece. Trap Nerds, Trap Nerds. Real niggas like you never heard. We giving you reliable gaming news. With the best movie and TV reviews from a Blur perspective. All things inside and out of Blurred culture. culture. Listen to the Trap Nerds Podcast or the Black Effect Podcast Network, iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. What's good? It's Colleen Witt and Eating While Broke is back for season three. Brought to you by the Black Effect Podcast Network and iHeartRadio. We're serving up some real stories and life lessons from people like Van Lathan, DC Youngfly, Bone Thugs and Harmony, and many more. They're sharing the dishes that got them through their struggles and the wisdom they gained along the way. We're cooking up something special. So tune in every Thursday. Listen to Eating While Broke on the Black Effect Podcast Network, iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Presented by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Welcome to Criminalia. I'm Maria Tremurky. And I'm Holly Fry. Together, we invite you into the dark corridors of history and true crime. For each season, we explore a new theme. From poisoners to stalkers, art thieves to snake oil salesmen. And tune in at the end of each episode as we indulge in cocktails and mocktails inspired by each story. Listen to Criminalia on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Episode 425, How This Couple Paid Off $90,000 of Debt and Didn't Sacrifice Investing. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, save money embrace simplicity, embrace and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. My name is Jill. And we are sharing an amazing story of Akiva and Meshach's debt payoff journey and coupling that with investing. So if you are looking to pay off debt, you are not like fully bought into paying it off as fast as you can, or even all of it, because you really want to prioritize investing at the same time, this one's for you. Because we're still doing that debt-free summer. (laughs) We are coming at you with all of these stories. And we really made it a point with each of these interviews that were originally made for YouTube to capture a wide range of people's experiences. And Akiva and Meshach are just that as yes. well. The ability to kind of do both and mm-hmm. that you can find yourself somewhere on the spectrum of debt payoff. It doesn't have to look one specific way. And they're a great example of, yes, paying down debt, making real concerted efforts towards that while not sacrificing something that's also really important for them, like investing for retirement. Because again, if you're doing this as a young person, the time that you have in the market to invest for retirement is the best thing you can possibly have. And it's unfortunately also the timing when you are paying off debt. So if you can find a way to hold the tension of both, then that's great. And Mm -hmm. so I'm excited to share this with you all because it helps to give permission. Absolutely. But first... Uh, This episode is brought to you by Summer Camp. It's the thing that you were supposed to sign your kid up for in like March. But in March, you're just trying to get through the spring. And then Maysember comes around and you're trying to get through the end of the year. And before you know it, it's July. And you didn't put your kid in a summer camp. And June was okay. June wasn't that bad, but it's July now, and now everyone's suffering. And all of your best laid plans for activities and creating your own summer homeschool, summer camp, art camp, those are out the window. And Nanny Netflix is here, and you're feeling a little little bummed with yourself. Don't be, because summer camp, it'll come next year, right? And if you're looking for free things to do with your kid for the rest of the summer, head to frugalfriendspodcast.com and sign up for the friend letter because every Monday we are sharing freebies from food to activities. Uh, They're nationwide and we're going to give you even ideas for free things you can do uh, so that you can fill the time with your child or just with yourself 
and just drop them off with grandma and grandpa. Send them for a little extended family summer camp and sign up for the friend letter. It's totally free and uh, and it will help you feel like you did something. Maybe you, for- you forgot to sign up for summer camp, but you remember to sign up for the friend letter. You're doing something. Yes. Right. You're doing it. Let us do the research for you. Yes. Just tell you what you can get for free. Frugalfriendspodcast.com. Amazing. Again, didn't write that one down. I have... <laughs> I've been s- slacking on writing them down. And so They're, they've been your best work, just riffing off the top lately. Yep. I literally just, I all it says is friend letter. You have to relate it back to the friend letter. Mm-hmm. And then I, I freeze and I just say the things that I'm really truly feeling on my heart in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so forgot about summer camp, but yeah. didn't forget about the friend letter. Didn't forget about the friend letter. You're doing something. So if you're loving these debt free stories, we have a lot of them back in our archives. We actually probably took like a year off from doing debt free story like interviews because we just have so many. So if you're looking back in our early years, our archives, you're going to find a lot of de- like diverse stories. So single moms, uh, couples, single income families, men, women, teachers, teachers, all kinds of income levels. So high income, uh, lower income, middle income. So we try our best to to give all kinds of pictures of what debt payoff can look like and not just really extravagant like I paid off $100,000 of debt in 18 months, you know, stuff like that. But Akiva and Meshach have a a really close story to that because they paid off $90,000 of debt in 18 months while still prioritizing investing. And so there are a lot of things they did, increase their income, uh, did not increase their lifestyle, uh, and then all while balancing debt payoff and retirement goals. So we are very excited for you to to listen to these and then also head back into our archives for the rest of our debt-free stories and just all the other stories we have from our first five years of the show. Let's listen in. It's still new to us Mm -hmm. to have two people on, a couple. So they are fellow Frugal Friends listeners. They've got a debt payoff story to share with us. So Welcome, Akiva and Meshach. We're so happy to have you. Of course. We're excited to be on. Yes. Welcome. So, Akiva, Meshach, tell us a little bit about you, where you are, your family. Uh, just let us get to know you a little bit. Yeah. So, my name is Akiva. Ah, <laughs> how do I not know my name? <laughs> my name is Meshach, and this is my wife, Akiva. Um, so, we got married back in 2020, and that's pretty much when we started our debt payoff journey together. Um, so from the time when we got married up until now, uh, it's been a little bit over two years now, but in about 18 months or so, we were able to pay off $90,000 of our student loan debt. Um, and I don't want to give too much away, so I'll stop there in case you have any questions, but that is the gist of it. Akiva can fill in my gaps where I'm sure I am leaving some. Yeah. So we live out in the greater Boston area. That's where we have been since we've gotten married and we are living the the dink life, dual income, no kids life situation right now. So we're, we're excited that we were able to achieve this goal during this life stage. That's amazing. And all of the things stacked on top of one another. Marriage in 2020. I mean, need I say more? That's enough. Paying <laughs> off debt within the first couple of years of marriage and living in the greater Boston area. That's not a low cost of living area. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> Okay, so $90,000 of debt. Can you break that down for us? Is there anything else that we should know about what made up this debt? Yeah, so at the time that we got married, we were just looking at student loan debt. So I had a car note that I had paid off um, shortly before we had gotten married um, and we've never had credit card debt or any other type of debt like that. So we were basically just focused on our student loan debt. And combined, we had just over $160,000 worth of student loan debt at the beginning of our journey. Mm -hmm. Um, We had been making payments. We graduated. Well, we graduated undergrad 2017, grad school 2018. So 
we got married in late 2020. And up until that point, we had been making some payments, but not like heavy payments. My payments were really only enough to cover the interest that was accruing. So I really wasn't touching the principal. And that was sort of intentional at that stage. And then his payments were like $12. Yeah, like my people my... non <laughs> I was on a yeah. um, government so uh, income-driven, income-driven plan. plan yeah. So I was not paying anything at all. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm sure they loved that. Just seeing the bare minimum, less than interest. I'm sure the servicer loved that. Yeah, yeah. I love seeing the $12 payments <laughs> on a month, but the interest then, you know, that was racking up quite quickly. I did the same thing. I was on an income driven repayment plan. And I think I was for the first few years after college, I was paying like $20, $30 a month. Mm-hmm. And I was totally okay with that. It's totally fine. Uh, until like one that one day when I realized my it, my debt had grown, it had not decreased over several years. Uh, so, do you guys remember that day? Like, what was the day that really like kicked it for you, where you were like, okay, it's it's time to pay this off? I think that for me that there was there wasn't a day for yeah. me, honestly. Um, I was more than content with just working at, you know, jobs that qualified to stay in the program and hopefully at some point getting my loans forgiven. But that's also at the same time, if I had a few extra dollars, like putting that towards the debt as well. Um, it was after we got married and we had some life changes, such as purchasing a home, um, that Akiva was like, hey, we can actually tackle this. Like if we look at it from a strategic perspective, now we have two incomes together, like we can get it done much sooner. And at that point, I was just like, OK, like run the numbers and tell me what we can do. Um, and that's really, I would say, what started it all um, and, yeah. and where we are now. Yeah, because I'm a financial planner by profession, so I'm used to kind of like looking at these numbers, doing my little calculations, like even right now as we're gearing up for tax season, we're in December filming this and it's like, okay, already starting to look at like our tax bill coming up. We're like the people who get our taxes done the, the first day, often, <laughs> like we're those people. Um, so I've always been that like proactive person. And for me, it was kind of just like a mental shift of, okay, like we're married now. We have, you know, two incomes, one household now, whereas before it was, we were living separately and all that stuff, maintaining our own lives. Um, and so it was just like, this is a good moment to really try to prioritize this. Like we've paid for the wedding. We've gotten a lot of like our life goals. We bought the house. Like we've done all those things. Like it's time for us to really pay more attention um, to this debt. And really we just, we took the subsection, because I knew we weren't going to pay off all $160,000. So we weren't necessarily trying to become debt free, Mm -hmm. but we were trying to pay off the portion of our debt that was about above 5%. And that was our highest interest rate debt at that point, which equated to about $90,000. Smart, smart, wicked smart. (laughs) So for you, Mishak, is there anything that you can remember that Akiva said to you that made you kind of willing to say, yeah, let's do this. Let's tackle the the high interest debt yeah i had to get hit with the emotional stuff or were you like when she hit you with the logic you were there (laughs) emotion or logic yeah yeah once she told me that hey this is possible for us to pay off this amount of debt by just using strategies such as living on one income so that's what we decided to do um for the listeners out there living on one income so that the other person's income could go solely towards debt Um, It was like, okay, can we do this? Like we've crunched the numbers. Yeah, we can. We can live comfortably like this. And it was just like, all right, let's go for it. So much so where she probably was just like, all right, calm down. Because I'm just like, let's get it over with. Let's pay it off. And she's like, no, 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 no. (laughs) Like we can, you know, use the funds once we've paid off the 90,000, put that towards other good use, such as retirement and things like that. But my thing was, I guess, the emotional attachment of, well, hey, if we can get rid of this in, in three years, four years, let's do that. And then let's focus on other things. So yeah, she keeps me grounded in the fact where it's looking at like what makes financial sense, not just what feels good. Yeah. And originally our timeline was three years. We were making, we thought that was super ambitious. Like our goal when we got married was we're going to get this 90,000 done in three years. And we got it done in basically exactly half the time. So we were just really excited about, you know, being able to make that progress that quickly. Oh, Misha, you and me, we are the same because <laughs> I felt this, I felt the same way. And 
my husband Travis is my like voice of reason because I was like all or nothing or I'm going all mm -hmm. hard trying to do it you know the right way and he's like well let's do it the smart way like <laughs> whatever yeah that we are the same and yeah and we talk to to people all the time too where they think it's going to take one amount of time mm -hmm. and once you get going it uh -huh. takes and like it's much different. shorter yeah. Yeah. yeah oftentimes shorter which is great i mean don't put that expectation on yourself but it is great yeah exactly just like get it done and then we can move on to the next thing and she's like no 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 like this makes more sense so it was definitely more of a come down moment for me but still really happy with the progress that we've made so so back to that concept about how oftentimes we set a time frame goal and then it ends up being less time than that. Do you mm -hmm. see any reasons for why it took you way shorter, almost half the time than what you thought? Yeah, absolutely. Number one thing was increasing our income. Mm -hmm. We would not have been able to do it that quickly if we had not increased our income. So that was a major thing. I think when we, when we, had gotten married we both had our full-time jobs um by the time we ended this we both he had a new job <laughs> new job first of all increase in pay i had started a side job <laughs> he had a side job so we went from like two full-time jobs to like two full-time jobs and like two part-time part -time jobs <laughs> and then our business right. on top which, of that which we so. pull from it all the business at all so we don't even really count that but like yeah it would not have been done without that extra income at all so Definitely. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another exciting episode of the Trap Nerds Podcast. This is not an episode, it's a promo. You know what it is, promo time. We in this piece. Trap Nerds, Trap Nerds, real n like you never heard. Join the Trap Nerds Podcast every Monday and listen to us discuss all things inside and out of Blurred Culture. Well, Quentin Tarantino uh, squashes his beef with Marvel and be like, I oh, God, just see how many foot shots of road we'll see, I'll be down with it. <laughs> <laughs> Make you know it'll be extra racing. With the best movie and TV reviews from a blurred perspective. I, I think if Bo DeMeo hadn't got fired, Kevin Feige would be in trouble right now. Breach. We giving you reliable gaming news and real genuine game reviews. I'll, I'll, I'll stand for lightning. Why does she have three games? Because she a bad <laughs> I hate you so much. Like <laughs> Listen to the Trap Nurse Podcast or the Black Effect Podcast Network, iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. What's good? It's Colleen Witt and Eating While Broke is back for season three. Brought to you by the Black Effect Podcast Network and iHeartRadio. We're serving up some real stories and life lessons from people like Van Lathan. TMZ was starting a tour. Harvey came and took the tour. By July, I'm on TV every day. I endear myself to the audience. He comes in, he goes, we're going to give you a raise. I think maybe a year, two years after that, I was a producer. DC Young Flight. It wasn't really no way for us to make income off of Vine like that. Mm -hmm. It was more so uh, notoriety. Once that popped off, it was like people was following it. And I didn't know how big it was. I didn't know people was doing this on their spare time. I was like, don't do that, kids. That's bad. It was it was crazy that it had to be that real and that harsh. Bone Thugs and Harmony. Our mission was we was telling everybody in the hood, we finna go meet Easy e We about to come back and do a video. Of course, we didn't know, so we was lying like a mother. Little do we know, we speak in reality, and we gonna come back with a bus and camera crew. And many more. They're sharing the dishes that got them through their struggles and the wisdom they gained along the way. We're cooking up something special. So tune in every Thursday. Listen to Eating While Broke on the Black Effect Podcast Network, iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Presented by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hi, I'm Katie Lowe's. And I'm Guillermo Diaz. And now we're back with another season of our podcast, Unpacking the Toolbox, where Guillermo and I will be rewatching the show. To officially unpack season three of Scandal. Unpredictable. You don't see it coming. It's a wild, wild ride. The twists and turns in season three. Mesmerizing. But also we get to hang out with all of our old Scandal friends like Bellamy Young, Scott Foley, Tony Goldwyn, Debbie Allen, Kerry Washington. So many people. Even more shocking assassinations from Papa and Mama Pope. And 
yes, Katie and I's famous teeth pulling scene that kicks off a romance. And it was peak TV. This is new scandal content for your eyes, for your ears, for your hearts, for your minds. Well, suit up, gladiators. Grab your big old glass of wine and prepare yourselves for an even more behind the scenes. Listen to Unpacking the Toolbox on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, so what did you make when you started and what did you work up to with all those side hustles or jobs? What'd you work up to by the end of it? Yeah, so we were combined making about 140, I think, when we got married, Mm -hmm. about 140 or so. And then like I said, by the time, um, you know, he switched to a new higher paying job, I had got a raise at my job, my day job, a bonus at my job, um, as well as starting a part time side hustle, I think got me about $10,000 or so um, from that, all that together. Then I think we were closer to like 185, I think, or so combined when that was all said and done. So yeah, we were able to really put literal tens of thousands more onto the goal, um, which really helped to escalate that, that time frame. That's amazing because especially when you're living that dink life and seeing some of the increase of income, Mm -hmm. there can be that well lifestyle inflation. And instead of that, you chose to just shove tens of thousands away to debt, which is awesome. And in that debt payoff, just for clarification, was did you pay pay it with any lump sums like from selling property or dipping into savings a ton? Were there any big payments that you used towards the debt no and i'm really glad that we didn't like consolidate because all of that was on the table like how can we do this should we do that Um, i'm really glad you know if the student loan thing comes through fingers crossed like that'll definitely you know just catapult us you know and that yeah that helped as well it wasn't just the the increase in pay i'm glad you brought that up it was also the for, um, forbearance that's been happening with no interest accruing on either that of our loans. Time, so. We've really been able to yeah. just pit away on the principal. So now we're running those numbers. It's like, okay, wow, it came down from this to this. And if we get the student loan forgiveness, it's going to be like two years where we'll be debt free. Well, student loan debt free if it goes through. So you know, we're happy either way because um, we're really happy with our progress. Of course, it would be nice to get a little something extra. But if we don't, like still the same plan of just crushing the debt as much as possible. Well, not as, not as hard as we have. We're crushing it at a more sustainable pace, but still accelerated. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's something I want to dive into because you made a strategic decision to stop at 90 and let the rest of your debt sit for the reasons you just stated um, and also for the lower interest rate. So, and I'm sure a lot of other people go through that. What goes into making that decision? Uh, Where do you stop and where, where do you go? Like, what are your thoughts when you're kind of making that decision? Yeah, it was really just running the numbers and it it was really hard for him to want to really stop at that point. Like I said, it was kind of uh, more emotion, but I'm really a numbers girl. So I'm always going to be looking at what is the most optimal, like tell me the most math answer and I will do that. Like that is just how I operate. And so at a certain point, when we got to that point, it was really like, okay, at this point, we are kind of putting in the bare minimum into our retirement accounts, like just to get like our like employer matches. So like I'm here putting like 6%, you're putting like what 5%. And it's just like, if we ever want to retire in some form of the near future, right? In this lifetime, it's like we have got to ramp this up as well. So instead of just putting every spare penny we have toward what is now super low interest rate debt, especially in a forbearance period, it's just like, no, we need to seriously look at increasing our investing rate at this point. And so I made the goal that we should try to get to a 15% all in like investment rate. I mean, that's including any employer matching. Um, And so basically that's what we have worked ourselves up to where we're at this point um, combined, at least up until very recently when I left my job, home of the story, Um, we have been putting 15%. um, That's a combination of our contributions and employer matching combined where we're both putting 15% toward retirement. Excellent. Thanks for describing all of that. So how did you decide how much to put towards the debt and where to slow down to? Yeah, it was, it was, that was more of an art. I would say, I think it was more like having conversations, writing the numbers, but having conversations where it was like, 
okay, if we pay $700 a month, let's look at how long that takes. Let's just literally, we're just playing with numbers. This is an amazing spreadsheet that runs our entire life um, that I highly recommend um, that we've been using to basically calculate our debt payoff date, assuming, you know, we put certain amounts of, of numbers in. Um, and so that's basically what we've been using. So I would play around with the numbers and I'd say, okay, if we do a thousand a month, like we're, how long is it going to take? If we do 1500, 2000 a month, if we can even do that, right? Like how long will this take? And we kind of just massage the numbers to a point where we could still meet our investing goals, um, and have basically everything else really mm -hmm. go toward that goal and still be within a time frame that felt reasonable to us. Um, so as Mishak was saying, like it, with our current plan, if student loan forgiveness comes through, because that's thirty thousand dollars on the line. Um, but you know, when if that does come through, that really shaves our timeline down a lot to where we could be out of this in the next two years. So. I'm excited about and I'd like to add just to make it clear because we mentioned that we increased our income we didn't sell anything I also want to say that we didn't change our lifestyle too much either um, yes, that's please. important as well we didn't like oh we're only eating ramen not that there's anything wrong with that for folks who do um, we didn't make those type of changes um, if anything, I would say that we kind of increased our some of our spending um, travel was something that was really important to me. Um, in addition to paying off the debt, once she, you know, mentioned that, like, that was something that I did not want to give up. So we actually traveled a lot more since we got married. Yeah. Um, this year, we took like three or four trips, um, three four. of them yeah. internationally. So like, that was something that we did not skimp on. We didn't skimp on our lifestyle. It was more of increasing our income and making smart decisions with the money that we've been given. Oh, that's so amazing. And I really appreciate hearing how you both thought this through and implemented something that worked for you, that was logical mm -hmm. and really individualized. I think it, it can work for some to just be given a blueprint or a script for here's exactly how you do it. And they could just put their heads down and do it. But it brings a whole nother level of mindfulness and a critical look and permission for freedom to implement the ways in which you all did of identifying how can we be paying off our high interest debt and think about retirement and still be living our lives mm -hmm. because we recently got married and we want to enjoy ourselves too and travel and not eat ramen. So just a lot of respect for the ways in which you individualize this debt payoff plan for yourselves. Yeah. So what would you have said to you uh, when you were starting out this journey or what would you say to somebody who is starting this journey and is where you were at? Yeah, it's really a balancing act. And and really, I, I can't give one, one piece of advice because I think debt is such a sensitive subject for so many people. And the emotion that goes into that, like I can easily say, I'm just going to tell do whatever the spreadsheet tells me, but that is not everybody, right? That's not even the vast majority of people. Um, and so I think that really you have to follow your heart in that case. You're not necessarily going to do things always the optimized way or the perfect way. Mm -hmm. As long as you're doing and committing to a plan that's going to work for you, I think that's the most important thing is to make some progress rather than uh, what I see on the other extreme, which is people just get so overwhelmed by it that they just don't even do anything altogether. So I think it's kind of having that that patience, knowing yourself um, and not comparing your your race to anybody else's. Um, you got to kind of take it at your own your own pace. Mm -hmm. And I would add on to that is for the individual that might not know anything at all about their debt, get get um, comfortable with your numbers, find out what your interest rates are, get a spreadsheet, a notebook, uh, Google, whatever it is that you're doing to keep track of things, write it down so that you're aware of, okay, I have this debt with this company, this company, this is the interest rate, because that's a good starting ground, where even if you do need some help to kind of put point you in the right direction, at least you have the foundation. That's great advice. So when you calculated the numbers, did you find that it was better or worse than you expected? 
I don't think I quite had expectations. I kind of knew it was but like I was I knew it was bad and I was kind of keeping track of it, honestly, even as a student. It was kind of yeah. like I was watching the mess unfold before me and I kind of just accepted it at a certain point. Like especially when it was like going to grad school and like, mm -hmm. okay, I went into grad school purposefully knowing that I was adding on another twenty thousand five hundred dollars worth of debt. Like yes. I knew that at that point I was cognizant of what I was doing and just kind of had to accept that fact and realize that like it's okay, like you're gonna figure it out, right? Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I do not think that we were like the normal high school students going to college. We went to high school together. And at that time, we were looking at numbers like which school is giving us the most scholarships, the most grants, what makes the most sense. So I think we really knew going in at, at every phase when we were adding on debt, what we were getting into. So it wasn't a huge surprise when we did the numbers and we're at 160,000. It's like, OK. It was more of a, we know how we got here. How can we get out of this? That's really, it was more focused on the end result versus how we got there. Well, Akiva, Meshach, we've come to the point in the program where we want to invite you to celebrate your, your huge milestone. Mm. Seriously, $90,000 of debt paid off in 18 months on a starting income of 140,000 worked up to 185,000 over that time. That is a huge accomplishment. How would you like to celebrate it? Yeah, I think let's do an awkward high five. <laughs> How about that? There we go. Woo! <laughs> awkward high five. Yay! Yay! We're here yes. for that awkward high You're five. Here for it. Yeah. Put the balloons on the screen. <laughs> you the confetti. <laughs> Yay for awkward high fives and computer generated confetti. <laughs> yes. Thank you guys so much for sharing your debt free story. Uh, we hope that people find inspiration in it, especially for people who want to focus on optimizing the financials, not just checking things off of a checklist. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Really appreciate it. I I love that they, they were the only couple where both people came on for our uh, debt free stories uh, YouTube series. Yeah, they were both present, mm -hmm. which was really fun. Yeah, which was so fun to get to get each of their perspectives on it. So it was it was just really good to hear them like talk about like increasing income, maintaining their lifestyle and really going hard um, for that short period of time, um, but not not doing it the way that everybody says you have to do it is yeah. really doing customizing the journey. That's what I really appreciate is they're customizing the journey. Yeah, you mentioned before we got into the interview that they didn't increase their lifestyle, which is one way of looking at maintaining it, but they also didn't decrease it either. They opted mm -hmm. for the path of increasing income to accelerate debt payoff. And that's going to work for some, not going to work for all. But again, these pictures of what it can be for various people, I love that, that it doesn't have to mean extreme deprivation. Some of us might choose to adjust our lifestyle, but they didn't. And they still became debt free, yeah. which is beautiful. And then that piece that we've already mentioned, I just can't get over it. Balancing the debt payoff with the retirement goals. I think that does require, and we even mentioned this in the interview, someone really knowledgeable of their personal finances and knowing what sorts of risks that they can take, the timeline that they want to, want to take it on, the ability to stick to those goals and kind of not fall off the wagon on either end. So I do feel like this is kind of debt payoff like 2.0 mm -hmm. that, yes, it's possible, but I do think you've got to have a really good understanding of what you're doing, how you're doing it, probably listening into podcasts, reading books so you can make sure that you're doing it in the most wise way possible. But again, it is possible. Yeah, I, I think balancing the two comes down to doing the math and it'll be, a, you'll have to do a variety of math problems and you can use investment calculators online for this, but figuring out, so how many years do I have before I want 
to retire. And typically I would plug in 60, even if you want to retire earlier than that or later than that, I would just start with 60 uh, and then look at how many years and then what's kind of the, what would it look like if you did $100 a month for X number of years? Uh, What would that get you like for three years? What would that get you in three years? And then, so you do that and then you plug that into whatever that number is into another calendar calculator as you're starting And then you say, okay, I'm starting with this. What does it look like if I invest $200 or $500 for X years? And you can do that. Some calculators will have like the option to add uh, X number of dollars per month, you know, every year. So it just depends on the investment calculator you're looking at. But uh, you can, and actually, I did all of this and I created charts and stuff for the investing course that I made. Mm. And that's actually one of our pre-order incentives yes. for pre-ordering um, multiple copies of the book, which you will all find out about soon. But if you don't, if you don't want to finagle investment calculators all day like I did, I just will just like you know preview. That's that's one of our pre-order incentives. But so you'll have to play around like if I want to pay off debt, obviously, I may not be able to put 15% of my income towards investing or or 20% or whatever you want. So you just have to play around with those percentages to see what's feasible. We do believe in having one primary financial goal that you are working towards at any time. When you're juggling goals, it becomes... None, none of the goals get met, right? It comes becomes overwhelming. But time in the market beats timing the market. And you save a lot of money on saving for retirement by saving early. So even if that's with $100 a month, you still make out better than waiting down the road to do two, three, 500. So we know that to be true. Um, but so it will, your amount will just be dictated by playing around with some calculators to see how quickly do I want to get to 100,000? How cl- how quickly do I want to get to X or a million? Um, and then playing around with, with timelines as well. So it is a 201 strategy for sure. Uh, but I think everyone, even if you're paying off debt, you can afford to do $100 a month. Like that's just a no-brainer. Um, if, if you're paying off debt, if you're you know, struggling to afford that, then it's a different story. Or if you're paying off high interest debt, like credit cards, that's a different story. Uh, But most people on their debt payoff journey can afford $100 a month. Or or do both in whatever way. Yeah. Yeah. Like whatever monetary amount. It can be hard to say specific numbers for everybody. For sure. Because we are all different. But for Akiva and Meshach's story, it did work for them. And it's something to look into for yourself, what you're comfortable with too, because this is such an emotional thing as well. We talk about this when we hear from people who paid off their mortgages. It's not a bad idea or an incredibly good idea. It's kind of what do you want to do? What makes sense for you, given all that you understand about finances and the options before you? I think similarly here, how it might pro to to be investing and paying off debt might prolong the timing that it takes for you to pay down debt, but it might be worth it because you know your income levels aren't going to really allow you to play catch up once the debt is gone. So these are the things you kind of need to weigh out. You can do both. You don't have to do both though. So yeah, figure out what works for you. But it did work for Akiva and Meshach, mm-hmm. and they gave us an awesome update. Yay. So this is Akiva writing and said, the biggest update is that we're no longer living the dink lifestyle. We gave birth to our first child, a baby girl, in December 2023. Congratulations. Yay. I'm technically still on parental leave as I write this message, which by the time I return to work will have totaled to five months of partially paid, which we've had to supplement from our own savings and income. Meshack took a total of four months off before returning wow, to work. Oh, that's amazing. Congratulations, Meshack. I, Akiva, also took a pay cut at the beginning of 2023 and I moved to another job. Despite that, we're still on track and making good progress toward paying off the remainder of our student loan debt. 
Right now, we have less than $40,000 to go and plan to be completely student loan debt-free by June 2026, if not earlier. We've maintained our investment rate of 15% and still prioritize traveling. Our daughter has a passport since she was two months old, and we've already taken our first little trip with her. Yay! Oh, wow. Ah. This is quite the update. You are juggling it all, including international travel with your child, your infant. I love it. I, I love that. So this couple was so on fire about increasing their income for this big goal, right? In order to have the opportunity to take extended parental leave uh, and be able to move to a lower paying job. Like, this is the thing when we say we're against hustle culture, but we're not against hustling. You know, we hustle for a short period of time in the parameters of the season that we're in so that for the greater season of our lives, we can have the flexibility to do stuff like this. I absolutely love it. You know what else I absolutely love? It's something that is always a hustle, but doesn't feel like no, it. <laughs> hardly a hustle, always a win. The Bill of the Week! That's right. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, buffalo bills, Bill Clinton... This is the Bill of the Week. Hi, Jen and Jill. This is Helen from Oregon. I am calling with my Bill of the Week, uh, which is the cheery cashier at our local discount grocery store, whose name is Bill. And for the last year or so, I've been making a lot of effort to cook all my meals at home. And it has felt challenging at times. And I don't love going to the grocery store, but Bill, the cashier today, made my day with his joy and it made me feel grateful for my food and my ability to buy the groceries that I need. So, yep, my Bill of the Week goes out to Bill at the grocery store. Thanks, guys. Bill! Amazing. At the discount grocery store. Okay, and so we had a whole episode on discount grocery stores. We'll salvage stores in general, but episode 420. Check it out. Find your own bill. Find (laughs) your bill at the discount grocery store. Just reclaiming the name Bill. Yes. And making it a good one. And this this is a double bill, really. Yeah. Discount grocery store and a cashier named Bill. And it excites me yeah, so much. We want to break down the barrier of salvage stores and discount grocery stores. They're not all like gross reject food. Mm-hmm. Like you find good you can find good quality food at good locally owned discount grocery stores with great local people like Bill. Well, and you know, if you just go enough, your standards could lower too. (laughs) (laughs) And you could start to realize that this dented can will work for me. And I can just slice off this hunk of mold (laughs) and we can move along because I am dead. Now I can afford groceries. Wow. If you go long enough, your standards will lower. That's the new subtitle of the show, I think. (laughs) If you listen long enough, your standards will diminish. It's that slow burn. They thought we weren't going to tell them just to slice off the mold, but here I am. (laughs) And I hope that every, I I hope that we all enjoy having lower standards. (laughs) I I mean, that's what happened to me with the thrift store. It's what happened to me with the discount grocery store. It's what's happened to me when I just don't feel like going to the grocery store. I got to figure out what's working in my pantry. Four days ago, I just gave everyone permission to be luxury girly and high quality (laughs) girly. 
And but today, that was your episode, Jen. This is me talking <laughs> this now. This is Jill's episode <laughs> where we are giving everyone permission to lower their standards. <laughs> so you never know what you're going to get on the Frugal Friends podcast. <laughs> if you all listening have a bill you want to submit, it's a, if it's about a cheery bill working at the discount grocer that you now really enjoy going to, if it's about saving money, because you really lowered your standards even better. Frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill. Leave us your bill. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another exciting episode of the Trap Nerds Podcast. This is not an episode, it's a promo. You know what it is. Promo time. We in this piece. Trap nerds, trap nerds. Real n- like you never heard. Join the Trap Nerds podcast every Monday and listen to us discuss all things inside and out of blurred culture. Well, Quint Tarantino uh, squashes his beef with Marvel and be like, I'll okay, just see how many push shots of road wheels, see, I'll be down with it. <laughs> <laughs> Make you know, it'll be extra racing. With the best movie and TV reviews from a blurred perspective. I, I think if Bo DeMeo hadn't got fired, Kevin Feige would be in trouble right now. Breach. We're giving you reliable gaming news and real genuine game reviews. I'll, I'll, I'll stand for lightning. Why does she have three games? Because she a bad <laughs> I hate you so much. Like <laughs> Listen to the Trap Nurse Podcast or the Black Effect Podcast Network, iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. What's good? It's Colleen Witt and Eating While Broke is back for season three. Brought to you by the Black Effect Podcast Network and iHeartRadio. We're serving up some real stories and life lessons from people like Van Lathan. TMZ was starting a tour. Harvey came and took the tour. By July, I'm on TV every day. I endear myself to the audience. He comes in, he goes, we're going to give you a raise. I think maybe a year, two years after that, I was a producer. DC Young Fly. It wasn't really no way for us to make income off of Vine like that. Mm-hmm. It was more so uh, notoriety. Once that popped off, it was like people was following it. And I didn't know how big it was. I didn't know people was doing this on their spare time. I was like, don't do that, kids. That's bad. It was it was crazy that it had to be that real and that harsh. Bone thugs and harmony. Our mission was we was telling everybody in the hood, we finna go meet Easy e We about to come back and do a video. Of course, we didn't know, so we was lying like a mother. Little do we know, we speak in reality, and we gonna come back with a bus and camera crew. And many more. They're sharing the dishes that got them through their struggles and the wisdom they gained along the way. We're cooking up something special, so tune in every Thursday. Listen to Eating While Broke on the Black Effect Podcast Network, iHeartRadio app, Apple podcast or wherever you get your podcast presented by state farm like a good neighbor state farm is there hi i'm katie lowes and i'm guillermo diaz and now we're back with another season of our podcast unpacking the toolbox where guillermo and i will be re-watching the show to officially unpack season three of scandal unpredictable you don't see it coming it's a wild wild ride the twists and turns in season three mesmerizing but also we get to hang out with all of our old scandal friends like bellamy young scott foley tony goldwyn debbie allen carrie washington so many people even more shocking assassinations from papa and mama pope and yes katie and i's famous teeth pulling scene that kicks off a romance and it was peak tv this is new scandal content for your eyes, for your ears, for your hearts, for your minds. Well, suit up, gladiators. Grab your big old glass of wine and prepare yourselves for an even more behind the scenes. Listen to Unpacking the Toolbox on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And now it's time for the lightning round. Pew, pew. pew. In what ways do you lower your standards? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) In what ways do you ensure that you're enjoying life while still working towards financial freedom? I love I love this one because it the idea of values based spending is not spending less because we are so focused on how much we're spending. We don't think about what we are spending on. And values-based spending simply switches that narrative to focus on the what versus the how much. And so when we switch that and we are focusing on the what and we are prioritizing our highest valued what's, then 
we know we're enjoying life while still working towards financial freedom, financial security, financial goals, whatever. So when we when we shift that narrative from thinking the budget will save my life to values-based spending will like allow me to maintain this these lifestyle shifts I need to make in order to improve. I think that is truly the essence of of just enjoying life because it's all when you're changing, you're creating friction and friction is uncomfortable. But we need to embrace the frictions. But so how how do we live? How do we sustain while we're ha- while we're going through friction? And it's it's making sure we have our most the things that matter most, highest priority. So what did that look like for you? So for me, it was relationships. It is relationships. Mm. It is uh, creating relationships that feel very authentic. And those and and I'm finding that every five to seven years, I need to create new friendships to fill spaces that I didn't have before. Um, and I don't abandon old relationships, right? But I do need to create new relationships to to just to be, you know, more of who I am becoming. Mm, um, yeah. So while paying off debt, that was a big transition into who I am, who I was becoming. So I needed to find new friendships. Um, and so that was that was the biggest marker of enjoying life. Mm, yeah. Was getting those highest priority values of friendship during the. So, and I'm still see, working towards financial freedom. It's a weird right, thing. Yeah. Like I'm still working towards that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The question is even now, like right. what did what? How did you enjoy life? Maybe during debt payoff, but then also now towards is financial a, freedom. Right. It is a present tense question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's it is for sure cer- for certain like uh, quality time. In the love language. It's so true. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll say the same. But also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, My mom would not, my mom would yell at me if I didn't say that. Um, but, <laughs> but what's also. your real answer, Jill? <laughs> okay. It does take some money to have some enjoyable experiences. Like, yes, the most valuable things in my life are the four Fs. But if we're talking pure enjoyment, the things that can just feel really celebratory and fun to me, a lot of it does require money. And so... Keep it G-rated. For me, (laughs) (laughs) it's the sinking funds. Like, when I was in debt payoff and now... Knowing that I have a certain of money, certain amount of money set aside that I am contributing to at to varying degrees for a specific purpose helps me to be able to utilize that, lean into it, and and take advantage of spending money on what otherwise might be perceived as a luxury I don't deserve. But I've intentionally worked towards this. I can have this even though I've got these other financial priorities. So when we were in debt payoff, any amount of money that we could get our hands on definitely went towards debt. But that was really prohibitive in being able to go out for a nice dinner or just do a little weekend trip. And I started to realize with how long our debt payoff took, we need that. We Mm -hmm. still need to be able to do some of these things We've gotten creative. Yes, we're hanging out with friends, but goodness, we need to be able to like take a break and spend some money on something other than debt debt payoff. So in that time, any change, like extra change that I would have went towards travel or like a vacation or or a nice like dinner change out. you found in your pocket. So we were doing a lot of cash at that time. So it was just any time a bill was broken, I would keep the full dollars, but the change would go into a pile so cute. of money. And any time that did I talk to you about tripping wire? Yeah. In one of the recent episodes about like side hustles, wire. I remembered that I used to Eric was an electrician, and so he would bring back these pieces of wire that were not not long enough for some of the runs he was doing in these different homes, but the copper inside them was worth money. So 
I would strip like the plastic sheathing off of the copper wire. And then once we had a whole big bin of it, we would take it to the salvage yard and get money for it. That money also went towards vacation or what I can't vacation makes it sound like it ended up being a lot of money. It never was right. Like we would get to a point where it was just like a couple hundred dollars. But we're also talking this was 10 years ago Mm -hmm. that absolutely could pay for a weekend away or a couple of nice dinners out that really helped to sustain me Mm -hmm. during that time. And now I've got a couple of different sinking funds that I have a goal of what it would mean when it's fully funded. Once it's fully funded, I don't touch it. I I don't keep contributing to it, but I'm able to pull out of it whenever I want to use it for that purpose. (laughs) And if you just heard a thud, that was one of the sound panels in the studio falling off the wall. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it and really wanted means, to emphasize my point. And that's that's the end. That's, that's when the sound panel falls off the wall. <laughs> that's the end. Thank you so much for listening. And thanks for your kind reviews like this one from But a Crut. <laughs> but a Crut. Okay. They said, love this. Five stars. It's a fun podcast that makes it easier to think about money and to make better decisions around it. Two intelligent voices talking about money in a non-judgmental and fun way. Also, you improv my English with new words and expressions every episode. Oh, improve. She... That is spelled correctly, Jill. That wasn't the, I just the writers. To say improv. That's, that's Jill. <laughs> I'm not improving your English with that one. The word is improve, and I read it improv, and well, here we go. This episode is truly over. Thank you for listening. <laughs> If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to leave a rating and review with some words that Jill may have trouble reading. Uh, We will for sure uh, share them and uh, we will laugh at ourselves and at things just falling off the wall. This is a this is a full blown audio studio, um, but we can't have nice things. We've lowered our (laughs) standards so that we're okay with what we have. Things may fall off the wall and we don't have stands for our microphones. <laughs> and you know what? That's a choice though. You don't care because jo- we are helping to lower your standards. Bye. Frugal Friends is produced by Eric Siriani. Jill, the only thing I wanted to say when you were talking about stripping wire is that that is the only thing you stripped during your debt payoff. (laughs) I wanted to make it was like physically painful for me to not say that. (laughs) So but here you are saying it still (laughs) in the after show. Mm -hmm. Still recorded. It's still recorded. Still probably the children's Hey, I'm saying that is the only thing. It's the only thing that you stripped. I know because OnlyFans didn't exist yet. Oh, okay. I didn't go that far. <laughs> okay. I didn't, I didn't reference anything. <laughs> I alluded. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's, okay. let's, let's, let's go put the sound panel stuff. back up. Okay. Diamonds Direct's summer sale is here. Shop now and get an extra 20% off Diamonds Direct's renowned prices. Get 20% off rings, earrings, pendants, bracelets, and more. Plus, book an appointment and get an additional $100 off. That's 20% off plus $100 off store-wide. And designers are flying in from New York and L.A. to showcase their newest designs. Rings, earrings, pendants, bracelets, engagement rings, and more. 20% off now to July 21st. Ends this Sunday at 5 p.m. Details at DiamondsDirect.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another exciting episode of the Trap Nerds Podcast. This is not an episode. I'm pretty sure this is a promo. You know what it is. We in this piece. Trap Nerds, Trap Nerds. Real n- like you never heard. We giving you reliable gaming news with the best movie and TV reviews from a blur perspective. All things inside and out of blurred culture. culture. Listen to the Trap Nerds Podcast or the Black Effect Podcast Network, iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
What's good? It's Colleen Witt and Eating While Broke is back for season three. Brought to you by the Black Effect Podcast Network and iHeartRadio. We're serving up some real stories and life lessons from people like Van Lathan, DC Young Fly, Bone Thugs and Harmony, and many more. They're sharing the dishes that got them through their struggles and the wisdom they gained along the way. We're cooking up something special. So tune in every Thursday. Listen to Eating While Broke on the Black Effect Podcast Network, iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast. Presented by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.